Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online. This is The Doctor and today I am going to show you my final build of the Avenger Battlecruiser. I have spent a lot of time with this ship lately and I've got a lot to show you. Now I'm going to have a new format for videos uh, in the future and starting with this one. I am going to have an introductory video for the starships as I've done in the past. And then I'm going to separate the battles into different videos, but I'm going to be doing more. In the past, I've only shown you the Borg STFs. Now I'm going to expand that. I'm going to include the Voth STFs, and I'm going to include a couple of PVEQs that will test our skill. So what that means is it's going to be a whole lot more content now when I show ships to you guys when I uh, preview these ships to you. You're going to see them now in more combat situations and situations that will really test the abilities of the ship. The way I'm going to do it is I'll do the intro video and then the second video I post after that will be a combination of all the Borg STFs. I'm just going to put them all into one big video from now on and that'll be in uh, that'll be infected space uh, cure space and then Kidmore Accord space and that will be one video. So that will test out our ship in Borg space and uh, against the Borg. Then we're going to test our ship against the Voth. If you go to the PVEQ you will find what I, I, I'm going to call STF. Some people don't. I might as well, You might as well just call them STFs. Um, they, they are um, the Breach and uh, oh, what's the other one called? It's somewhere. If we go to reward, go to like Dyson Sphere stuff. There you go. Uh, Storming the Spire and the Breach. These are the two Voth ones. These will really test our ship. I have played these a few times now. And I am impressed. They have uh, what it's going to do, first of all, it's going to test our ship against the Voth. And the Voth are a tough enemy. So it will test our ship's ability to, you know, take down a really tough enemy. But then when you do the mission, the Breach especially, it's really going to test out maneuverability on our ship. Because as you're flying through the big Voth city ship, you have to maneuver uh, quite a bit and uh, get through the corridors pretty fast to the next area. So that's going to test our maneuverability. And then storming the spire is just basically Voth after Voth after Voth ship that you defend the tower as you're trying to get troops into it. So these are good tests and I'll make this the third video out of the series. So I'll combine these two uh, into one video and you'll have Voth storming the spire and the breach. And then I'm going to expand it, and I'm going to do probably Azure Nebula Rescue. I kind of like that one. It's fun because it just is. <laughs> and uh, you get to fight Tholians, so we'll get to test our ship against Tholians. And then the other one that I'll probably do will be a fleet mission. I'll probably do Federation Fleet Alert. And uh, what that will do is that will test our ship against a whole bunch of enemy faction ships. Um, basically you get wave after wave of ships and then plus their siege ship at the very end. And it's random so I don't, it, you never know which enemy you're going to fight. But it could be the Borg, it could be the Tholians, it could be Gorn or whatever. It um, is actually a really good test of your ship's capabilities as well. And I'll make that the fourth video and combine those. So from now on there will be four videos. An intro, the Borg STFs, the Voth stuff, and then a couple of PVEQs. And that's really going to test out our ship. Now what that's going to mean though, is I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time getting our ship ready before I just I make the videos. In the past, I just conglomerated all my stuff together, put it on the ship, threw it together, and then went and fought the STFs and made videos for you. Well that won't fly now because I need to spend more time with it to make it an act actually a good ship and a good build uh, for those other things as well. 
So I'm going to be spending a little bit more time with each ship before I make new videos, but the end result will be quality, quality content showing these ships to you guys in all these different aspects of Star Trek Online. And uh, that's just going to lead to uh, just an awesome look. And I'm starting right here with the Avenger. So I did make a video on this previously, and I'll throw up a link to that. Uh, that intro video, um, I gave all the specs for the ship. I showed you all the details and all the information. So go, go watch that video if you are wondering what the heck the Avenger Battlecruiser is. Uh, I'm not going to go over all that stuff again because it's redundant and there's already a video up on it. But pretty much the Avenger Battlecruiser is a very maneuverable cruiser. It can fire cannons, it can fire beams. And um, I finally have a final build that I have done by trial and error and by heavy consideration on to how I'm going to do this. Go beams or go weapons and what energy type and all that stuff. I finally got it all together. I am on my character, Ensign Ricky. He is an engineer. Now he does look a little different. I have been spending a lot of time lately on Ensign Ricky and I have been grinding on him as hard as I can. And I have got a lot of stuff, fleet stuff and uh, rep stuff and all kinds of stuff that is going to help this character um, show you these ships uh, from now on in a better way. So first of all, you'll see that I have changed Ensign Ricky's costume. He used to have the uh, Toss or the original Star Trek red shirt on, and that was because he's a red shirt. But I have decided to upgrade Ensign Ricky. He is now uh, going up in the ranks, uh, or at least in the costume. I guess he'll always be an Ensign. But he is now wearing a current costume. And uh, this costume will allow him to um, just give us, it's the, uh, I, th I believe it's the Sierra one. Yeah, the Sierra costume is the one I'm using. So this will just give us a more modern look at Ensign Ricky. He's now wearing a modern uniform, uh, colored to engineering colors, maybe a little darker, but I like that. He's wearing a uh, communicator. He's got his pips on. Uh, he's even got a, a Jupiter belt, apparently, uh, but I like that. It looked good on him. So this is our new look for Ensign Ricky, so get used to it. Ensign Ricky got an upgrade. Ensign Ricky also got an upgrade in many other aspects. I have been, like I said, grinding on him very hard. Uh, first thing I want to show you is I am almost, I mean, just a tad smidge away from rank 4 diplomatic now. I have assignments running right now, and when these are done, that will get him to rank 4 diplomatic. What does that mean? That means he will be a full ambassador at that time, and I get all the benefits of being an ambassador. And I, that's where I've always wanted to get uh, all my characters, is to uh, rank 4. I, I don't really worry about the other ones. I mean, it'd be great if I could get all of these to rank 4, but the first one is definitely the diplomatic one that you want to work on. So he's almost a, a full ambassador. So Ensign Ricky moving up. So there's improvement there. Second, I have been working on his, um, wrong button. I have been working on his reputation. He is tier five new Romulus. So that means we have all the new Romulus passives, and I believe I've showed this in the past, um, available on him. I also have Tier 5 Omega, so I've got those passives going, and I have been working now on Nukara. So I am a Tier 3 Nukara on Ensign Ricky. Now unfortunately I don't have the Tier 4 one, which is the one uh, that would really make a big impact. Uh, but I don't have that quite yet. As you can see, I'm working on it and it's getting there. Uh, but I didn't want to wait till I get there to make this video. There was really no point. I can still show you the ship without getting to Tier 4 Nukara. But the reason why that's important, important is because of the passives. Uh, you've got two options on the passives here. And I know it shows plus zero, but if you're in space, it'll show the real number. But you have two options. Auxiliary Power Configuration descent, Defense or Auxiliary Power Configuration Offense. And what this does is if you choose the defense option, it will take a performance equal to 20% of your auxiliary power and channel it into shield performance, structural integrity, and hull plating. So, and structural integrity, that's basically your hit points or your whole health or whatever you want to call it. 
uh, your shield performance, and then the hull plating. So all of that will help uh, beef up our ship more. Uh, or you can put it into offense and uh, increase your weapon, energy weapon training, your projectile weapon training, or your starship weapons training. And uh, like on a tactical character, if you put this into offense, you're just going to be even more powerful. Uh, for Ensign Ricky, being an engineer, I would probably choose the defense option, and that will beef our ship up even more. So consider that. Consider that when you watch these vi these videos, that our ship is not even buffed as high as we can get it yet. There's still this buff right here we can add to it, and I can't wait to get that, but it's not there yet. Anyway, I have been working on that, and yes, I am using the sponsorship token. So I am getting double the XP from ripping up in Nukara. Also, I have purchased some things. However, there are some things I still haven't purchased. Number one, I do not yet have the adapted Mako shield impulse engine or uh, deflector on Ensign Ricky. Ultimately, that's what I want, and that's what I would want on the Avenger. But I don't have it yet. As you can see, I'm working on it. I've been grinding a lot. I'm almost at 2,000 Omega marks, but I really I need 3,000 total because each of these each piece of these gear costs 1,000 Omega Marks. So I need 3,000 Omega Marks just to have the Omega Mark part of it. But then you also need 64,000 Expertise and 34,000 Dilithium each one. And if I look at my Dilithium, I only have 31,000 uh, Dilithium. So I don't even have enough for one piece right now, let alone three pieces. So I am far away from having enough materials to get the adapted Mako set. However, it is a continuing grind that I am doing and the ultimate goal will be to get adapted Mako and put that on the Avenger. So just consider that's another buff that I don't have on the Avenger when I show you these videos coming up, but I will have in the future and would want and would recommend and if I had them right now, they would be on this ship. But that's what I would run as my build if I had them, but I don't yet. Um, next, I do have a bunch of fleet stuff, so let's just go ahead and look at the USS Tom Baker. This is the uh, Avenger uh, Battle Cruiser, and as you will notice, there is a bunch of new fleet stuff here, fleet level weapons. I have used the fleet and uh, the uh, done the uh, fleet marks to get fleet credits to uh, beef up our weapons on the Avenger. So I may not have adapted Mako yet, but at least I've got some really powerful weapons. And uh, what I did is I decided to go, as you can see, with a beam build on the Avenger. Not a cannon build, even though it can support it. I have a very good reason for this. I'll tell you this reason right now, and I'll even bring it up again because it's very important. This ship, while it turns fast for a cruiser, isn't quite fast enough for a forward-firing cannon ship, like an escort. It does turn faster than any other cruiser, but it's just not fast enough for cannons to have all your to have a forward-firing ship. Remember, with cannons, you would have all your cannons up here. You'd have turrets here, and you would want to have a nose to your enemy firing ship and it's just a tad too slow for that just a tad now you could add rcs accelerators and all this jazz to speed up its turn rate sure but then you're sacrificing console slots for that and it already comes with one uh, uh one console slot the uh, vada quantum mode thing universal variable auto targeting armament so you want to keep that and you don't really want to sacrifice a slot for tactical because you want to beef up your energy damage type there. So that's really the problem with trying to make this ship turn faster is you sacrifice too many console slots in trying to get it to be a really, really good cannon build. Instead, what I found is that it's better as a beam build. And what you end up having is a really fast turning cruiser beam boat. So it's like a fast turning beam boat. And it's a cruiser, so it's a little beefy and it's not like an escort. You're not going to not going to tear you to shreds like toilet paper. So it's 
it's it's like it's like a really good beam boat and that's what worked for me now that was through trial and error and consideration I did try cannons I I just couldn't quite get it to where I where I wanted it but as a beam boat my gosh it, it it's so maneuverable right it just moves in and out of the enemy so quickly and I can turn and I can do things with it better than any other cruiser and it's got five forward weapon slots so I can really beef it up with beams so as you can see I went with three single beams up front and then I added one dual beam bank to give it that extra punch when I am firing forward right and then in the back I gave it uh, two beams and then so that means when I'm firing from the side I'm gonna have one two three four five beams firing from the side and then when I turn around to the front this one has a 90 degree targeting arc uh, then I'll get the uh, dual beam bank helping with these three singles and that give a lot of forward punch to it All right, so that's my build and I am using fleet weapons I got advanced fleet phaser beam array mark two damage times two accuracy times two Always go for more accuracy even with beams accuracy 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 and the fleet weapons have that perfect split of uh, Damage times two and accuracy times two so that's what I went with same with the uh, dual beam bank damage times two accuracy times two That's my beam boat, and it's awesome now as for the torpedo I, I decided to stay with the Mako set go ahead and get the full benefits of the Mako set so I have the Omega torpedo and that fires the little torpedoes really fast and then uh, it has a high yield really high powerful plasma you know torpedo yield thing that'll vaporize enemies um, it also works with torpedo spread and as you're gonna see I've got torpedo spread 3 it's really awesome just a spread of Omega plasma torpedoes going out like crazy it's amazing and now in combination with that also the kinetic cutting beam and that gives us a two set bonus called Omega weapon amplifier and that to remind us is 2.5 uh, percent chance that applies Omega weapon amplifier which gives us plus 10 current weapon power plus 500 current weapon power resistance rating and a plus 500 maximum weapon power resistance rating so uh, that is awesome now on top of that you also add in the Omega console, the Universal Assimilated Module, and you have a set three bonus from that called Reactive Deflection. And you have a 1% chance when hit to reduce all incoming damage by 99%. Okay? This actually ends up working well as you play. You will see it working. It's got this like green bubble that goes over your ship. And it works more than you think it would. It actually. Uh, every time I play, it, every time I go in any match, it, it, it hits at least once or twice. So it's it's very useful. Sometimes it's several times. So it 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 actually works. But by having all three, I get those, you know, two bonuses. Now, in addition, for my deflector, impulse, and shield, again, I do not have adapted Mako yet. That is what I would want on this build, and that is what I will put on here when I get them. Until then, all I have is Aegis. Um, that's the best thing until I get Adapted Mako, and the reason why it's the best thing is basically the reactive shielding ability of the three-piece bonus from having the Deflector Impulse and Aegis Shield. And I'll look at that because that is very important. When your shields are hit, reactive shielding has a chance to activate and it activates all the time. Uh, this thing is always running. It increases the resistance to the incoming damage type for a short time. Any incoming damage type. It doesn't matter if it's Tetrion or Plasma or Polaron or Phaser. It will create a resistance to that damage type and it can stack up to five times per en energy type, right? And it can even resist against several different energy types at once. So here's a shield with the three-piece bonus, of course, you gotta have all three pieces, that will resist against any energy type. It'll stack up to five times on that energy type, and it can operate on multiple energy type resistances at the same time. Just holy wow. Reactive shielding is everything it says it is. 
So if you don't have adapted Mako or Mako or whatever, Aegis set is the way to go, especially on a cruiser. Okay. Um, the only downside is that it does have a lower capacity. You can see the capacity 6930. It's a lower capacity. The uh, adapted Mako is like upper eights or 9,000 capacity. It's a very high capacity. So you are losing a little bit of capacity compared to that, but you have that uh, reactive shielding ability. Uh, so anyway, this is I'm just saying this is the best set to use until you get Adaptive Mako. Adaptive Mako, what that'll do for us, that'll give us an innate 20% resistance against plasma damage, uh, which will be good against the Borg, and it has a higher capacity, so we're going to have a much higher shield capacity with Adaptive Mako. It also has a, another, it has a bonus called Tactical Readiness, which is uh, also a good thing to have as well. So um, when you have all the whole set. So I don't have it yet. That's the ultimate goal, is to get that. So so consider that I, I don't have that new Kara bonus or buff I was talking to you about. I don't have adapted Mako yet. So even without those things, uh, you're still going to see how well this ship does. So then consider when I add those things, how much better it will be. Then on top of that, uh, the warp core is the last piece of the puzzle I do not have. Uh, I have the obelisk warp core, which is not terrible. I mean, it's a good warp core. It's a good free warp core. It's, well, it, let's just say it's the best free warp core. But it is not the best warp core. There are fleet warp cores. And in fact, if you have a fleet that has started on the fleet spire stuff in your Dyson Sphere stuff, you will find some really awesome warp cores in the Dyson Spire. And uh, when you get up to a tier 3 spire, you will find a warp core that is just super incredibly awesome. Um, the warp core is called, uh, I guess, let's see, it'll show it somewhere here. Th this is it right here. Ultra Rare Elite Plasma Integrated Warp Core. Um, I might go to the Spire and show you this because the stats on this thing are incredible. It has five freaking modifiers. Five modifiers. And don't be uh, confused by that plasma integrated part. That has nothing to do with like adding, adding extra plasma damage or anything. That's just the name for the thing. But that warp core is just super op. It does some incredible things and I want it badly. As you can see, we're not to tier three yet, but when we get to tier three, that's the warp core I'm grinding for on all my ships for sure. But I don't have that yet, so I'm waiting. And it costs quite a bit of dilithium and fleet credits and all that stuff. Until then, I have the uh, obelisk. So consider, now I don't have the Nukara buff that I was talking about, I don't have the adapted Mako buff, basically show capacity and other stuff and I don't have the warp core buff I don't have the the best of all those those three things and yet when you see this ship in action you're still going to see that it does great even without those things so just consider it'll do even better with them um, now as for my other consoles of course this ship comes with the universal variable variable auto targeting armament and it fires like tachyon things and quantum thing or chroniton or something things. It's good. It actually is very useful and I use it quite a bit. I did get a Mark 12 Very Rare Eps console. I really like that EPS for that power transfer rate. And I did have the, uh, I did do the grinding to get my awesome fleet Neutronium console which I like to have on every ship. This one is an upgrade of the regular Neutronium console you can get. It adds extra kinetic and all energy damage, so you have the highest uh, all uh, kinetic and all energy damage resistance rating from a Neutronium. Plus, it adds 10.6 Starship Structural Integrity, which is your ship hit points, or health points, or your hull strength. All the same things that describe the same thing. Um, so that flat out increases my hull strength in space. 
So that is an awesome fleet console. You get it from your dilithium mine, and I recommend it. It's good. They also have RCS variants. If you needed an RCS console, the dilithium mine RCS consoles are the one you want to go for, because they also include things like this with an extra mod with a modifier like that, like ship hit points or something. So um, those are useful as well. Now for the science console, of course, I have my maximum, I only have one console slot, but I have my maximum shield capacity. Um, I wish I had the Mark 12 very rare, but those are like 30 million or so energy credits, so I cannot afford it, but I was able to afford a Mark 12 rare, not very rare. So I think the very, I think the very rare will go from plus 18.8% .8 to like plus 20%. I wish I had it, that would give me just a little bit more shield capacity, but I don't. Now as for my tactical consoles, there's no other option when you're flying beams but to get every bit of energy damage you can out of those beams because beams do not do as much DPS as cannons flat out, they just do not do as much damage, okay? and. Um, people with cannons will just tear apart ships. So with beams, you really have to give them some love. And the way to give them some love is to max out your tactical console slot with the highest ability, the highest um, mark level and rarity level that you can. Also, um, you want to make sure you use energy type consoles and not like beam damage uh, upgrades. So I've got these maxed out with phaser relays, which uh, improve the phaser damage. Uh, these are Mark 12 or Mark 11 very rares. I looked at all the pricing, and this was the cheapest way to go. Um, the next upgrade is I would like to have Mark 12 very rares, but I could not afford Mark 12 very rares. So for right now, this is what I have. Now, also, there is a new console in, introduced with the Fleet Spire that you can add in uh, the tactical console slot that replaces these and upgrades them much like the Neutronium one upgraded the regular Neutronium console. They have one that upgrades these consoles and it's called like a vul vulnerability locator or something like that. But it increases your damage even more and adds a modifier to it like critical chance or critical hits and i think i can show you that really quick here one of these tiers i guess it might be operations would unlock that well i guess it unlocked at this one well i'm not sure where it is exactly but uh, they are there and if you go to your spire stuff you'll see them there but anyway um, we may go look at that because I, I can just show you some of those things that are available to get but that will help you even more but I don't have that yet again that's just more grinding I have to do I'm not quite there yet it took me a long time to get all these beams and this console here and uh, work on Nukara where I'm at and everything it took a long time just to get to that point and uh, right now I'm working on the adapted Mako stuff and Nukara at the same time. So that's kind of my priority right now. And then after I get the adapted Mako and the Nukara maxed out, then I'll probably go for the Warp Core. And then after the Warp Core, then I'll probably go for the Tactical Console. See, there's a lot more grinding yet to do. But even without all that highest end junk you can possibly get, you are going to see how well this ship does. So that's my build for the Avenger. Now let's look at my stations. This also took quite a bit of consideration and trial and error. As a beam boat, you have two options. Uh, do you, what do you want to do with your beams, first of all? You've got to decide, what do you want to do with your beams? Do you want to do beam overload three or two and have like that punch power? Or do you want to do something like FAW, fire at will, and do uh, something that like FAW two or FAW three or whatever you can do that will help um, do damage to multiple targets. And then you gotta decide what you wanna do with your torpedo. Uh, do you want a high yield or do you want to scatter? And then you kinda of build it that way from there. I determined that I wanted more priority on fire at will. I tried beam overload 2 and I tried fire at will 1 but I didn't really feel that. 
with what I was playing and what I'm going to be showing you, Fire at Will 2 was better. And then having Beam Overload at 1. So at least I have both abilities, but I have a little bit better with Fire at Will 2. And you'll see that right here, Fire at Will 2. Now why did I not go with Fire at Will 3 or anything like that? Well, I have Torpedo Spread 3 on my Jem'Hadar. And when you see Torpedo Spread 3 in use, you will just be in awe. It's awesome. I decided to stick with Torpedo Spread 3 instead of like Fall 3. So that way I have a really good Torpedo ability as well. And, uh, and then I do have Torpedo High Yield 2, so I get that plasma thing that will vaporize ships. And then I do have Beam Array Overload 1, which I use occasionally you know, if it falls on cooldown or whatever, I'll use Beam Overload. Now, I have Tactical Team 1, always gonna have that. Now, what I did is because, here, here, here's my way of thinking on this ship. You've got beams, you don't have cannons. Cannons would rip through shields and rip through other ships like paper, right? Beams will not do that. So what you have to do is you have to have abilities that augment your beams to tear through ships. And what I mean by that is you need abilities that strip shields on your ships with beams so that you can get right to their hull and then destroy them with torpedoes and other things. So in building this ship, I have built it to strip down shields with beams. And how I've done that is I have added one ability here called Target Shield Systems, Subsystems. This will target... Um, the uh, shield subsystems on your enemy and disable them. You have uh, negative three to all shields or negative 25 subsystem power for 15 seconds and to target 20% chance to knock near a shield facing offline completely. Um, so this will basically drain their shields or cause uh, impact on their shields or possibly even disable a whole, a whole shield facing. Uh, so this target shield systems is goes in with the other abilities that I'm going to use. I've added Directed Energy Modulation 3. Because I'm an engineer on Ensign Ricky, I was able to train this ability on my Borg. And this is a uh, shield penetrating energy damage per pulse. And you can't see the stats right now because we're not in, in, sec in uh, space, but you can see what it does at least. It, it's a penetrating energy damage per pulse shield thing. It, basically, it's going to strip their shields, okay? So that is what I've done to help strip their shields. And I've also got a couple other, I got some other things too. But that will, um, basically with those two enabled, we can strip their shields and get right to their hull. Now as an engineer, uh, I, I also wanna have the ability to heal myself really well uh, on a cruiser especially. So I have emergency power to shields three, which is a, an ability I was also to train myself so that I get um, shield regeneration, shield uh, healing, and all that stuff. Really good ability. I have engineering team two, so I can heal my hull. And what's really important now, the uh, second to how your beams are attacking ships and taking down their shields and stuff, what's really important for phaser damage is power. Power is everything to phasers, and phasers drain power like a mofo. Okay, they just drain your energy power. You need something to buff your energy power, your your weapon power specifically, in order for your beams to be effective. Now, some people go with emergency power to weapons three, tier three on this. Certainly you can. That'll give you much more phaser damage if you had emergency power to three. But then you would have to do away with, you know, it's like directed energy modulation. I have found that with the other abilities I have, Emergency Power to Weapons 1 is sufficient because I have things like Red Matter Capacitor and I have the engineering ability that boosts all your power levels, okay? So with all these things combined, I only needed Emergency Weapon to Power 1 because I've got other things that can help boost my weapon power and then that way I can utilize Directed Energy Modulation 3 and have a Tier 3 ability as well in addition to that. So that's why I went with that. Now for Science, I did Science Team 2 and uh, Polarize Hull. Now you could, you could of course use Transfer Shield Strength here. 
I know a lot of people like that ability. That's optional. And uh, I may even change to that in the future. But right now, Science Team 2, it works. So that's my bridge officer setup. Really quite simple, but there's a lot of thought that, go, that went into it. And the thought was stripping shields and making sure I have uh, the right ratio, I guess, of weapon power. And I'm fine with that, with Emergency Power to Weapons 1. And I'll show you. I'm going to enable this in space, and I'll show you how that boosts the DPS. Um, so that's my setup. Now, let's go back real quick to the uh, ship again. Uh, phasers. I'm using phasers. Why not anti-proton? Why not Polaron? Why not Tetrion? You're probably asking yourself. Well, quite simply, Ensign Ricky... It, it, this is almost a role-playing thing here. Ensign Ricky is a Starfleet character. He is 100% to the bone, to the core, Starfleet. He is not going to use weapons that are un-Starfleet. So I just felt that I wanted a character, because all my other characters are, are, are unique. My main character, the Doctor, he fires anti-protons. My secondary character, he kind of fires what, everything, because he's got like almost everything. But he's got a lot of Romulan plasma stuff too, or Disruptor, or whatever it is now. My tactical officer fires the Andorian phasers because he's got the Andorian ship, so it just made sense to use the Andorian phasers. My Klingon, she fires Tetrion, but I hate that. I think I want to change her to Anti-Proton. Uh, my other ones, they're not really built up yet. My, Rom my Romulan, Rassilon, he's firing uh, the Romulan stuff right now because he's Romulan. So all my characters are using unique stuff, but I, ne I didn't really have one character that's a Starfleet, you know, to the core Starfleet character who's just going to stick to Starfleet stuff. So that's Ensign Ricky. He sticks to Starfleet stuff. And that means Starfleet, they use phasers. Now this is not a bad thing because you can take any weapon type and boost its damage. There's ways to do that, you know, and I've, sh I've kind of shown you those ways. So. Choosing phasers is not a bad option. Now, there are some sets that boost specific energy types. For example, if you get the obelisk core and the um, omnidirectional anti-proton beam and you put them on, there's a two-piece bonus that does plus 10% to anti-proton damage. So if you have an anti-proton build, you want the obelisk core and that omnidirectional beam, or uh, yeah, 360 degree omnidirectional beam, to get that plus 10% to uh, anti-proton damage. There are, all, there are also other sets that will improve, I think, plasma damage. And there's there might be one for Polaron, I'm not sure, maybe Tetrion. Yeah, I think maybe the new, some of the new Kara stuff will boost your Tetrion damage. So there are other things for other energy types that will boost their damage even more. Uh, there's nothing like that for Phaser, unfortunately. There's not a space set, Deflector Impulse Shield, or a Warp Core that specifically will give you a bonus towards Phaser damage. So you are losing just a tad there, but it's not terrible. And I'm going to show you with this ship that it's still going to be alright even with Phasers. Especially the fact that I'm using Fleet Phasers and you know, uh, fleet weapons, and then once I get, man, once I get four of these tactical consoles to that vulnerability tactical console or whatever it is, where you can improve your, like, crit damage or crit chance and all that stuff, and uh, have even more phaser damage, it, it'll be rocking. It, it's not bad. It's not terrible. So, that is my build. Next, I'm going to show you uh, just some visuals that I have chosen for my ship, and then we'll go into space. There are different, uh, this is a really dark visual, but this is what I like on my ship. There are different things you can do. First of all, there are different materials. You've got the Avenger material, which looks like that. You've got the type one, type two, three, four, six, and if you're a veteran, you have a veteran material. So first you start with the Avenger material because that's unique to the ship. Then from there, um, you can change the pattern on it, like for example the, uh, the saucer here, let's change it to something and you'll see just by changing it, see what it does, it really makes it even look darker, like look at Aries on it, it really makes these dark lines on it, but you could change the color of that, I guess it's this one, no, or not, <laughs> I guess that's not working like I thought it would, well it's supposed to change the color, maybe it would on a different material but, well, uh, maybe not. Okay, I guess you can't change the color on them. 
but adding those patterns will drastically change how the ship looks. It can really, you know, make it look even darker, like, you know, like that. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look how dark that saucer looks now. I went with none, just to give it a basic kind of gray look. And in space and in battle, it really looks good. Now, you can change on the nacelles. Where are you, nacelles? You can change these little things here. What are, I don't even know what they're called. They're called fins. You can have no fins or fins. No fins or fins, and that's all you can change. I went ahead and kept the fins on. For the window type, you have a couple of different options here, or several different options. Oh, you got the Avenger window. window. You know what? I didn't have the Avenger window on. I had something else. So let's go ahead and change that right now so I can have the Avenger window, and we will have the fins. I'll have the fins tonight. And uh, yeah, let's do the Avenger windows, Avenger material, no, no patterns. We'll keep the we will keep the fleet emblem on, and for the interior, you have the origin bridge, and you can have whatever size you want. I'll keep it on medium, which is default. So let's save that. That is what I'm going to go with on the visuals. Okay. Now let's go into space and look at this, because in Soul Space we can now look at all the stats of our ship. And I can show you how well it turns as a cruiser. And it also has some interesting animation an, animations animations that I noticed. It took me a while to notice, actually, but I, I found them. And I do want to show you those animations that it has. So here we are in Soul Space, and you can see how it looks now in uh, proper lighting. Um, see, I like that. I like that dark look to it. It's just unique. It's just really unique. I mean, it's got a really unique look to it. So here are my stats. It's got 500 crew, 50% uh, crew recovery rate. Uh, stealth detection is 19.30. 190% transfer rate. On defense, I'm not moving, so it's negative 10. But if I go to impulse, my bonus defense sits at 50.4. So that's like half. It's like up there. It's quite a bit. Twice as much. Whatever. My hull is at 51,000. That is not terrible. It's not the best. I mean, you know, the um, other ships like the Obelisk and all that are up there in the 60 to 70 thousands. This one is 51 thousand. Um, now that is being boosted by a new Kara reputation passive as well, which improves maximum hull by 5%. So I'm getting a little buff from that. Uh, but now that we're in space, we can look at what this would do. If I had these abilities, this would this would improve my shield performance, structural integrity, and hull plating by plus 9.6. So that's useful. Or I could choose plus 9.6 on weapon training, projectile weapons, and weapon training. Energy weapon and weapons. So I'm not there yet. I can't wait till I get that because that'll be fun. Um, back defense. So 51 is where I'm at on hull. That's not terrible. That's, that's pretty good hull strength. Hull repair rate is 180%. Shield regen rate is 131. Now my forward, my shields... Dude, you are annoying me. Now my, sh my shields are at 10-9. Again, that's because my capacity is... Uh, I don't have adapted Mako. If I had adapted Mako, I would have a much higher capacity. Let's get away from everyone out here so we can uh, show you stuff without everybody making noise. All right, so here we are. Okay, my attack, I'm sitting at 25% bonus accuracy, crit chance 6.4, crit severity 59.1. Not too good, but I'm not a tactical officer. And then plus, once I get those consoles here, I can boost my crit chance or severity a lot. Um, Movement, this is what I want to show you. This is really good. Inertia 50, flight speed 24, turn rate 4.6, 4.5. Now when we go to impulse, our turn rate is 16.2, okay? That's our turn rate. So, I will just show you. That's how she turns. As you can see, it's not quite fast enough for tor torpedoes, I was gonna say. Not quite fast enough for cannons, but it's really good for beams. Because it's one of the fastest turning cruisers out there. If not the fastest turning cruiser. 
That's actually a really good turning speed for a cruiser, but not quite enough for an escort. Get what I'm saying? So that was my theory on why a beam boat. Now let's move uh, with the uh, camera here. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, that's how long it takes. But because I'm firing beams, no matter which way I'm turned, I'm always hitting the enemy. And with fire at will, I can hit multiple enemies at once. All right. So, uh, I've got reactive shielding from my um, Aegis. What else to show you? What else to show you? Um, oh yes, the command abilities. This starship has command abilities because it's a cruiser. It's got command weapon system efficiency. It has command shield frequency modulation and command strategic maneuvering. Now, the strategic maneuvering, if, if you did want to increase your turn rate and flight speed a little bit more, you can use strategic maneuvering. This does plus three turn rate for yourself and nearby allies, and plus 10% flight speed for yourself. So let's go uh, back to, uh, where are my buttons? Let's go back to uh, Impulse here. Let's turn away from everyone so we can do this. I'll bring up movement again. 16.2, 24 flight speed, okay? Now when I hit this button, 19.2 degrees and 25.2 and now this is how fast we turn it's barely noticeable but it's there it's an improvement so if you're in a situation where you need a little extra maneuverability and flight speed hit this button this ship has it and that's going to be again really good in this beam boat let's take that off now now that we've talked about maneuverability, and I'm going to show you maneuverability when we get to the Voth stuff, especially through that city ship. The next part I was telling you about was how weapon power affects um, your beam stuff. With this little deal on here, we can look at our, our deeps, DPS. When we hover over one of the phasers, you can see I'm doing 937 DPS. Now you compare that to a cannon, that's not a lot. But for a phaser, that's really good. I mean, for a beam weapon, excuse me, that's really good. So keep 937 in your head. Watch what happens when I hit emergency power to weapons one. 1031. We go from that, we went from 930 to 1030, basically. 100, 100 more DPS. How's that for some free DPS? You like that, don't you? So that shows you what weapon power can do for your beams. Now, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm curious. I have, I of course have red matter, and then I have the engineering ability, which is EPS transfer three, which does plus 25.6 all power settings for 30 seconds. So I'm wondering how those will affect my DPS. Um, red matter. Okay, that does not affect my DPS. So I won't have to worry about red matter improving my phaser damage. How about this one? Nope, that one does not affect my DPS either. So now you and I together have learned something. Those do not actually, even though it increases my power level, I'm at 125. It doesn't improve the DPS of my beam. So yeah, really, and I guess I guess I see now why people use emergency power to weapons 3 because that would probably improve it even more. So that's the one you want to use then if you want if you really want the highest DPS you can get. But I still like having like the directed energy modulation 3 which now you can see the uh, real number on it. It's plus uh, plus 115.8 or no, that was being buffed too. Okay, that was being buffed by something. But it is 105.2 shield penetrating damage per pulse. I bet one of those power things uh, also boosts the directed energy shield modulation, or directed energy modulation. Anyway, it's got 100, 105 shield penetrating energy damage per pulse. And then let's see if that boosts it. Yes, 115. So emergency power to weapons. Who would have known? Who would have thought? That actually helps you quite quite a bit more than you would think. Helps more things than you would think, I should say. But these, what they will, they will do is increase your other um, 
power levels like your shield and your engine and, and your auxiliary. So these are not terrible powers either, but it looks like this one is the go-to one for improving your DPS and improving, improving some other things like uh, directed energy modulation. Very cool. I've learned something today, actually. <laughs> All right. But there is something else that can really help with beam weapons, and that's this command ability, Weapon System Efficiency. This is a minus 25% weapon power cost for your allies and enemies. And remember I said beam weapons will drain your power like a mofo. But enabling this will do just a little bit less of a drain. Minus 25% weapon power cost. So as a beam boat, this is going to help. So there are a lot of things we can do to, to beef us up, even with beams versus cannons. We can enable our weapon system power, system efficiency thing. We can enable emergency power to weapons. You know, and, uh, and of course we have all my gear, and once I get those better tactical consoles, that'll be even better. And you have a very decent build. Um, this one, here's the real, real results on it. It's a target, negative 200 all shields, negative 24 system power level, 20% chance to knock shield facing offline. So, all these things combined kind of play into each other. And see, that's the whole thing here. It's kind of like a synergistic thing. If you went with cannons, well, I guess this would help with cannons. But, you know, I, I really feel that the beams are the way to go with this ship. And then... Of course, you also have this. You can boost your 10% um, damage reduction to shield or plus 10% shield regeneration. Um, but these command abilities, don't forget about them. They're useful. I, I end up using them a lot now because now I know how to use them. Uh, basically, if I'm firing on an enemy and doing a lot of weapon fire, I got my weapon system proficiency going. If I need to quickly get somewhere or turn really fast or maneuver, like maybe in the Voth City ship, I'll go with the maneuvering one. Or if I'm in something like CSE, where the or a case where the uh, the the gate or those uh, cubes are draining your shields with tachyon beams, then I'll go with the shield regeneration, right, and help with that. So these command abilities are very useful. You just have to use them in the right situation. So I like that. Now this little dealy, if you're wondering what it is, it's a shield capacitor. It comes along with the obelisk warp core. So, um, because I have the Obelisk Warp Core, this is just another shield ability I have. Plus 288 shield regeneration and plus 15 shield power. Now, actually, actually, you can see it increases my shield power, so I can get my shield power. I can get my shield power way up there, look at that. And then if I added the red matter, it'd be 125. So, there's the potential for really buffing up shield stuff. 125. Isn't that awesome? 125 weapon, 125 shield, 78. 73, isn't that cool? Um, now, if I got a better warp core, I could go ahead and increase that anyway, and eventually I'll get there. Um, now, next thing is the thing here I cannot show you because it doesn't let you do it until you're in uh, combat, but it's the Vada. And uh, right now I'm in Tachyon mode because I got the shield thing selected, but that will be useful, and you can see what it does there. Tachyon, tachyon armament projectiles fires a Tachyon beam every one second at an enemy. Again, that can help you rape shields. So, let's say you really want to take down someone's shields. You're mad at them. You just want to, like, take their shields down, right? Hit them with that. Hit them with that. Have this enabled. And then fire the, the Vada at them. Okay? And then this, of course, for the damage. Fire your phasers and your beams. And, oh my gosh, their shields are going to go... Okay? So, there's how you take down their shields. All those things can be used at once. Now, let's say you need to buff up your, um, you know, or reduce your weapon damage resistance, whatever. Bam! Enable that. And then, when you switch modes, you have now the quantum mode. You are in a quantum armament projectile, which fires a micro-quantum torpedo. So let's say you've destroyed their shields with that. You've done all that stuff we just did and destroyed their shields. Okay, their shields are down. Now let's switch to this mode. Fire this if it's cooled down. Obviously, this has a cooldown on it. And do a quantum damage to them. And then, of course, you select this one. You get a whole different one as well. Called a Chroniton Armament. Fires a Micro Chroniton Torpedo. And this one, I guess, does more kinetic damage. With shield penetration as well. 20% uh, shield penetration. 
So there's those different abilities, and, and they're really cool. It all works together very well. So that's my build on the Avenger. Oh my gosh, if you stayed around this long and heard me just yapping away at the Avenger, applause to you, and thank you so much for watching, <laughs> because I know that was probably extremely boring. There is one more thing I want to show you. We're going to warp out, and I'm going to go into battle, because I want to show you some unique animations on the Avenger that I did not notice before. And uh, it took me a while. I had to actually look over the whole ship as I was doing something to see where those animations were. But we'll just find a quick red alert out here, and we'll go into it, and I will show you... I'll show you that. And I will first point out where on the ship to look before we engage the enemy. And then I want you to look in those places. Okay? First let me turn in these DOS. Got four of them waiting here. Maybe this will take me to... Yes! Right there in front of your eyes. You saw it. Oh, go away. I am now... Where's my... Oh, it already gave me that. Wait, did it? No! I'm so close. Oh, so close. 98.7. No, never mind. It didn't. What it did is it gave me a Vulcan science officer. Apparently, it gave me a tactical Vulcan science officer because I must have started something that recruited a thing. Anyway. All right. Here's what I want you to look at. Um, I want you to look at the nacelles right here, this blue part. Right now, it's open and it's very visible. I want you to look at the Buzzard collectors. As you can see, they're red, especially this bottom one. It's red. I want you to look at the deflector dish. It's got the uh, this this ring around it out here. I want you to look at the windows. You can see windows here. You can see windows here. I want you to look at the back. You can see inside the shuttle bay. Okay, those are all the places that are going to change when I engage combat. We'll engage combat quickly. Get out of the way. And then I'll show you what's changed, okay? Now, watch the side of the ship. Combat. Now, let's get out of the way. Now, look what has happened. These little door things have come down over the nacelles to protect them. You have another little thing that has come down over the Buzzard Collector to protect it. Like you've gone into battle. I guess we're going to have to keep going into battle to show you all the different things. Now these rings, this is the reactive shielding from the Aegis set. Like I said, it works all the time and it works a lot uh, so to protect you, so very useful. Okay, now look at the shuttle bay. It closes! Look at that! It closes! It, 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 it's got like a um, protective uh, covering over it. Look at the windows. The windows are gone. They have protective coverings over them. Watch what happens when I come out of combat. See these windows right here? Yes, these were windows. Watch what happens. One of them. Look at that. The windows come back. Isn't that amazing? So it covers the uh, shuttle bay. It covers the warp nacelles to protect them. It covers all the windows. Now let's look at the deflector dish. And then under underneath the thing, where's some enemy at? I got too far away from them. Okay, deflector dish. See the rings around it? The rings go away. It darkens. Like a protective shutter has gone over it. Underneath the ship. All those windows no longer there. It's got this protective covering. See that protective covering? When we come out of combat, that will uh, those rings will come back and those, she those uh, windows will come back. Any second. There we go. See? The windows came back and that came back. So like right along there it adds like a um, like armor, like whole armor, I guess you could call it. And doesn't that ship just look good? I mean I know that's a dark color scheme, but wow, isn't that awesome? So there you go. There's some animations that took me a while to figure out. Uh, actually. But then when I found them I was like, wow, that's really cool. That's like a detail to the ship you would have never noticed before.
there's everything highlighted. You can see the bright spots is where the uh, hull armor is. The uh, armor that's on it. Isn't that cool? That's just the coolest thing in the world. So I wanted to show you guys that because I didn't notice it before when I first got this ship. But now I'm like, oh yeah. Fog, go to work. And that's why I like fog. So I'm going to show you uh, more of its abilities, of course, when we're in combat. But, you know, just playing these Klingons here... What is fire again? See that green bubble? That was the uh, three-piece from the Omega set. See, it works, it works a lot too. What is firing at me? So all these things end up working really well. And I can maneuver. See how quickly I'm able to turn and maneuver around and stuff? Let's take out this horde over here. We'll just decimate them. Here's, here's spread, by the way. All ships destroyed. Yep. Totally awesome. Totally awesome. By far, right now, this is my favorite newest recent ship. The Avenger. And I liked the, uh, the, the Moog on the Klingon side, which is basically the Avenger as well. And that one worked well with cannons. This one, uh, I'm liking with beams. So there you go. That one with cannons, this one with beams. These are good ships. They're very, very good. I think I'm going to keep this one for a while. Of course, I'll show you more ships, but I'm going to keep this one, you know, and use it as my main uh, grinding rig for Ensign Ricky for quite a while. Well, that's basically what I'm going to show you right now. Like I said, this was just the introduction video. I have a lot more coming up. The next video is going to be all three Borg Space STFs in one video. The next video after that will be the two Voth STFs in one video. And the next after that will be something with the Tholians and then a fleet battle. Or a uh, something with a fleet PvE. So that will all be a bunch of fun and it's going to show you this ship in very cool ways, right? It's going to show you all the abilities this ship's capable of and uh, really test it out for us. So I hope you all really enjoyed that introduction of the uh, Avenger, or second introduction <laughs> to the Avenger. It's a fun ship, and I'm going to have a fun time showing it to you, and I've got a lot to do, and I've got a lot more to grind, but, you know, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to show it with this build, but in the future it will have even better stuff eventually, and be even better than what I'm showing, if you can believe that, after you see what you're going to see. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get in some good matches that won't be a disaster. You never know what you're going to get, especially with the PvE ones. You get in the queue, you never know who you're going to end up with. Anyway, thank you all for watching so much. I appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned. There will be maybe something a little special coming as well, and uh, I'll have a video up on that later at some point this month, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next. Avenger away!